All right, so we've got a new place. Well, it's not new, it's kind of old and ratty, but it's, it's new for me. We're gonna paint all this shit black and whatever. This place is a third of the price of the last one, and it's uh, much, much closer to home. So the last one fucking cost me about 450 a week to rent, and it was half an hour away from home. This one's costing me 150 a week, and it's literally five minutes down the road. But it, it does the job. We're going to shoot a... It's going to be a big one. See this machine here, right? This is a fucking monster. Look at the size of it. It's huge. This is a... Accommodates a 40-inch screen. That's 40, 40-inch from there to there. It's going to be a full player. But guess what? We're not doing this anymore. Because the customer's changed his mind last second. and says, no, 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 no. I want a 42-inch. And I don't want these standard buttons, I want LED buttons, which is fine. Customers always right. They're assholes sometimes, but they're right. And um, the 42 inch screen will not fit in that. It's about, well, you know, two inches, so it's a bit more than that, about two inches too big. The thing is, um, the diagonal width, oh, sorry, the diagonal from top left, for example, to bottom right is 42 inches. From side to side, it's not 42 inches, obviously, but it varies by about. I think it was 10 millimeters from there to there and this is exactly 900 mils wide from that to that the 42 inch is um it's 920 wide so it's about 20 mils wider 20 mils is almost so it's just under an inch a quarter of uh, three quarters of an inch or something anyway so um i'm going to be doing a speed build but i'll be stopping the video um and doing explanations in between so you can see what i'm doing i just don't have time to shoot a step by step like the last one it'll be exactly the same as the last one the difference is as you can see this has a like a a, a um a box where the joystick will sit on because the joystick will come out being a full player it'll stick out more between there and there um the other machine had the joystick just sort of, sort of sitting on the on the top just at that console there just sort of laying flat without that box you know i can take this off if it comes off, get off. Oh, it's hinged on. Okay. The last machine, the joystick prop sat just there without that box on. Um, that's for a two player. Two player will fit neatly in between there. For a four player, because you've got player four and player three on that side, we'll need to have the joystick sit out this far. And they won't sit out that far without a box to sit on. So, um,. We're going to be building a new one from the beginning. These take ages. These take about nine hours to build from start to finish. It may not sound like long, but um, a two-player takes me about four and a half hours. These take double the time. Uh, but that's because I've got all the right tools. Obviously, if you're going to do this on your own and you don't have um, a router, I mean, look, a router's not something everyone has, um, and, you know, and a table saw, obviously. Uh, it'll take you a good weekend quite easily. I think you can do, you can knock what I'm about to do now off in a weekend. So, um, let's get started. It's a shitty day, it's raining. The place is crap. I want to play some music, but if I play some music, then YouTube will flag the video and won't let me upload it. And plus it's going to get because it's going to be running at four or eight times speed anyway. So, um, I'll just have it in the background. Let's start. Uh, fuck it. Let's start. This is my usual template. Um, you can see see how there's a line cut there. Well, not drawn. We we'll need to cut this off. But my router, because I don't want to cut this template, I'll be going around with a router, and I'll be coming back with a jigsaw and cutting this freehand. Now, with a jigsaw, the slower you cut, the straighter you cut. So, um, practice makes perfect, I guess. So that's what I'm doing. If you're wondering, it'll be different slightly to the last video. So, or the how-to anyway. Um, so if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's exactly what I'm doing.
Okay, there you go. So I've cut that notch out. You can see it's pretty much straight on that line. That's just a reference point. But um, I had to take the mask off. That's naughty, naughty. You don't do that. Because um, I should really have a dust extractor attached to that. Any one of my tools, actually. But I just don't. I'm too fucking lazy. So while you're cutting, dust is going to get in front of the blade. And it's going to occult, obscure that line. So I had to sort of just, you know, blow on the sawdust to get it off. Uh, but it works. So that's the um, that's the little recess we're going to put that box on. We're going to recycle that box and put it on this machine. So it's going to save me a bit of time. But building a box is, is very easy. It's just, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, so I'm going to do another one of these. But this time, because I've got the router, I'm going to use that as a template now and cut around um, the other shape. Uh, if you notice... This isn't going out of focus anymore because it's a new fucking phone. Samsung. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm an Android fan. I fucking love Android. The Google Pixel really upset me. The Pixel 1. Um, I haven't had any issues with, with blur or non-focusing or anything on this. So um, It's a nice picture as well. So we're not going to have any of that problem with shit going out of focus and you're not seeing what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to go back to speed build. We're going to throw the other board on. Cut out with a router. Then we'll be cutting the panels out. Now... The width of my 32 inch machines is 750 mils. Don't ask me about inches, I have no idea. Divide by 2.5, I think. Um, that 42 inch machine, or well, that 40 inch, is 900 wide. This 42 inch is going to be 950 wide, 95, uh, 950 millimeters or 95 centimeters. So, because that's not wide enough, we have to sort of uh, cut that way. We're going to waste a few boards doing that. But it is what it is. So, if you're wondering why I'm doing that, why is he wasting so much wood? That's the reason I, I didn't go out and buy. They don't make these boards in 950 mil wide. Um, they make them in 900, which is too short. So unless I get them custom made, I, I didn't have the time or short notice. So it's going to be a lot of uh, off cuts.
Look at the size of that thing. Before the disc I blow up. Oh, here we go. It's fucking massive. What can I show you for scale? Jesus. Um, all right. This is my standard 32 inch screen machine joystick. All right. From there to there is 90 centimeters wide. What's that in inches? I don't fucking know. It's, it's, it's big. There's an extra, Jesus, 10, 15 centimeters just between there and there. That box that you see is 110 centimeters wide. So this machine is going to be a monster. It's going to be 110 centimeters or 1100 millimeters wide from there to there. That's the size of a 10 year old child, basically. You can lay your 10 year old if you've got one sideways and that'll be the width of the machine, basically. They should make a new measurement, like, you know, 10 year olds. <laughs> Don't worry about it. My son's 10. Um, I think he can. No, he's a bit taller than that. You know, he's, he's a tall kid. Uh, maybe, maybe my six year old daughter. Yeah, it'll be taller than her, definitely. All right, so we're going to put the door on. We're going to take that box off. We have to cheat because the guy who wanted that doesn't want a square box. He wants like a half hexagonal box because he wants player three on that side, player one and two in the middle, and player four there. That's where they are normally. Um, but I don't think it goes with the lines of the machine. So I usually just make it straight across. So we're going to recycle that one, put it there. Now, it's just a box, man. It's a... Uh, it's a base, it's got a side, a side, a side, a side, it's a box. It's just missing the top because the joystick will sit on the top. I've cut holes there for the uh, pinball bumpers. So, um, and this hinges back, so if you need to get to the screen for whatever reason, you know, you, you'll undo a clip there, and then this will just hinge back all the way. So that way it's easy access. All right, so we're gonna put that there, so we're gonna skip that tutorial. Um, these joysticks, this four player, we can't use that because um, both these customers, he, this guy initially wanted regular coloured buttons, which are what you see here. They look quite nice, man. They're, they're very vibrant and they're good quality. They're not the shitty. I mean, they're Chinese, but they're good Chinese, not shit Chinese. Um, he's decided he wants LED buttons there too, so we have to unwire all this shit. It's not hard, but see, I've, I've also glued them in, like with hot glue, just to make sure they, they never sort of come off, unless you want them to come off. Um, that's a fail safe, because these get interstate a lot, so I don't want clips or anything falling out, so I have to take all these out. And then we're going to put LED buttons, and I'll show you how much fun, being sarcastic, LED buttons are. They're the fucking worst thing. I hate them. I hate them. That four player will take me, on average, 40 minutes, 45, maybe 50 on a slow day, to build that that that's including cutting the holes out you know uh, edging it and everything and putting the buttons and wiring it and all that it takes about 45 to 50 minutes to build let's call it an hour led buttons take about an hour and a half an hour and 40 minutes for a four player um there's double the wiring and there's just so much fucking around with putting the buttons in i'll show you non-speed i'll show you a real-time speed before i put the buttons in then i'll speed it up because it's just going to be tedious watching them um but we'll go from there Now, this door is closing, which is good, but it's heavy. It's a, it's 950 mils wide. It's a meter, almost. So it's gonna, it's gonna sag over time, maybe even within the next few days, but you know, it will. I've got three hinges on to support its weight. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
So it's already sagging a bit because I don't have all the screws in. But there's a slight variance between there and there. You can't probably see it too well. But maybe it's a couple of mil off. Like when I shut it here, you can see I've done a great job. It's, it's a, a consistent width from top to bottom. But what I want to do is just shave a bit off the top and a bit off the side and a bit off the bottom. So if it does sag over time, it's not going to... I don't want to force it down, but it's not going to... I'm, I'm, I'm holding it down now. So I won't do that. We don't want, it, we don't want that to happen. All right. Uh, so you can see there's a decent gap there. Um, so we're going to take a few millimeters off. Just, just on the top and bottom. That'll give it room to grow, so to speak. Over, over time it will sag. Uh, once we paint it, um, the MDF is going to absorb the moisture from the paint. It's going to swell. So that's probably going to, or more, it is going to sort of, you know, expand a bit and it'll start hitting the... Now, I don't mind doors that sort of friction close. A lot of people don't like it. They, they think it's unprofessional. At home, I like making my doors friction close because you can just sort of shut them and they'll, they'll hold themselves there. Um, but, yeah, anyway, everyone's different. Um, but, yeah, we're going to do this properly. So we'll shave a bit off the top, off the side, off the bottom. And... Um, We'll rehang it. We'll put. I've only got three screws in at the moment. Uh, we're gonna. You can see. I fucked up. Right. I know. See that little dot there. The screw's gone in at an angle, so I have to sand that back and flatten it, so it doesn't look bad. But once I put the other three screws in, that'll really hold the door well. And they're really long. They're these ones here. See, this camera will focus. I like the last one. I showed them in the last video. They're uh, thirty-two mil. I think the counter sunk. Don't know what the exact name is. I think they're countersunk head screws or something. But I still got the boxy. They're chipboard screws, countersunk rib head. 32 millimeters. The MDF is 16. So you can see how deep they penetrate. There. They're going to go in about that deep. So you can see that, yeah, it's, it's got good penetrating power. That's what she said. Yeah. Anyway. Um, going to hang this, going to take this off, going to sand it on that, just cut a little bit off the top and bottom. Short back and sides. We'll rehang it. Then I think we're ready to paint. We'll see. All right, so we've got the door back on. You can see now there's more of a gap on the top and there's more of a gap on the side. And it's the same gap on the bottom. It's all consistent. So if that ever hangs, or sorry, sags, I should say, I keep saying hangs when I mean sags. Um, it's not gonna sag by much. It might sag by a few millimeters. So um, eventually that straight, nice parallel line is going to be off by a couple of millimetres. But that's over time, that's not anything that's going to happen soon. Um, but that's it, we're going to uh, prep the machine, I'm going to put a door stop there inside, just so the door has something to stop against. Um, I'm going to put a couple of slats in, tiny little slats, just to hold the monitor up, or so I can push the monitor against them before I secure it. Um, and then we'll sand it, prep it, sand it, paint it, Prep it first, then sand it, then paint it. Uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I'll put a little door stop in. It's just a piece of wood that basically is inset the width of the actual door. So, I mean, I know you guys know how door stops work, but see, it's a nice consistent line all the way down. This is forced perspective. That's why it looks like it's shorter down the bottom than it is at the top, but trust me, it's, it's, it's legit. Um, put two slats in. Right there, the monitor will push up against that um, when I secure it into the chassis of the machine. So um, we're going to sand it back. We're gonna, oh, if you're wondering why there's nothing on the top there, we're putting in a light up marquee on that. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, the thing is, getting to that, I, I, don't, I don't mind people copying these for home use. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's my design. I like it. You may not like it. Everyone's got different tastes. There's much better looking machines out there. Uh, and quite a lot of people have asked me for plans, which I've given them a while back. I don't have them anymore, but I have to get them. Um, but you know, I mean, just, just they've basically freeze framed the video and copied it and I don't mind, but I've got a few competitors, absolute dickwads who clone these and sell them as their own for commercial, you know, on a commercial sort of standard. So the thing is, they claim that's their machine, and look, look how great we are. Look what we've done. It's mine, you know. So um, the reason I'm a bit hesitant so half the time in showing everyone how I do things is that there are a few things that I do that other people haven't worked out yet. Nothing's rocket science. I know I use that term a lot, but 
it's I'm good with code, I'm good with software. Um, I'm decent with it anyway. I've got a brother who's a fucking genius at it. So we, between us, we can do a lot where we can get games working that never used to work uh, on other people's systems and, you know, set timers within the code. So when you pull the pinball plunger back, it'll sort of um, hold it back digitally, you know, for X amount of you know seconds or, or whatever it's going to be. Uh, so we can do all that, but I, I can't give that away. Uh, but the other thing I'll show you later on is with MAME, when you download it, most of the games will work. A lot won't. Um, for home use, no one gives a shit, but when we're selling these to people, we don't want any glitches. We want everything to work. So there's processes that don't come with, like when you go into the main game, we'll discuss that later. Like they'll, they'll default to a much slower processor. People mistake that for actually being a slow PC, so they'll go out and they'll buy a higher-end PC, which will sort of fix the problem slightly, but not all the time. You actually have to find the right CPU for that game, like there's Z80s, there's Motorola 68000s, there's CMDs, there's a whole bunch. They all run at different sort of megahertz, um, at different speeds. And like, for example, I think, uh, I'll have to show you, I think Tekken Tag uses a CMD, is it? It runs at 100 megahertz, but by default, when you download MAME, it'll default to the Z80 chip, which runs at 8 megahertz, which is 12 times slower. So Tekken Tag won't work on most machines because they don't know how to download or you know, inject that particular CPU into MAME and just you know configure it. It's not hard, but if you've been doing it for a long time, it's I've been doing it since MAME came out in 1997, so you know it's 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 easy for us. Um, but maybe one day we'll show a shoot. But we know our competitors watch our videos because when I started doing pinball, they started doing pinball. They couldn't work out how to use Visual Pinball because they're fucking idiots. So they use Future Pinball, which is much easier to... You just download it and just install it. Visual Pinball takes a bit of work. And it's got 865 pinball tables. Visual... I think Future Pinball has 32 at the moment. Maybe more. Don't know. So everything we've shown on our previous videos, our competitors have implemented. So that's kind of rude, you know. But anyway, we're doing this toot. So guys who want to do this at home, you know, relive their old memories and, you know, keep the dream alive, can do this. Um... If you're a competitor and you want to copy these, you know what? Fucking give us some kudos, man. Yeah, just say, hey, thanks to, you know, us, whatever. You know, look what we've done. But anyway, here we go. We're going to prep this and sand it and paint it. <laughs> Okay, we've sanded the machine down, we're going to paint now. I use uh, just self-priming gloss acrylic, any brand will do. And here's what my competitors are dying to know, so I'm going to tell them. Sally's Aquity, that's just interior wood glue. Um, basically it's a, look I'm not a chemist, but it's, it's a very similar chemical composition between the two. They're both plastic at the end of the day. Um, this is what I use, this is just a cheap Ozito self-contained spray gun no compressor required it's just like that's like a blow dryer and it just blows the paint out there it, it does pretty well but you need uh, a good four or five coats um, so what I what I do is go through the bottom this is seeing a lot of use all right there's 20%, this is my ratio. I've got to get the lid off. Let me just cut, got the lid off finally. I don't, I don't, man, I'm only guessing at the ratios. Uh, I think it was 20% um, 20 water, 40% glue, 40% paint. 
I do it by eye, all right? So to paint a machine this size, I just do this. I just count in seconds, like a one, one thousand, two, one thousand. Look, you can see the steady stream. Um, don't even count seconds. I just sort of look at the bottom of the thing. That looks about right to me. Can't really see much, but it's in there. And then for the paint, let me set this down. Pre-shaking this. The rest is paint. That's it. Now the paint I'm using, the acrylic, smells like um, it's water-based, but it. It has a very alcoholic smell. I don't know if there's alcohol in there, but compared to other house paints, which have more of a, I don't know how to explain, sweeter, a sweeter sort of smell. Um, this has a very, that stuff there, all right, the Torbins, that's a different brand altogether. If I get that on my fingers, I could just do that and it'll come off. With this shit here, if it gets on your fingers, it won't come off. You really got to scrub it, you know, with water and, and solvents and that, even though it's water-based paint. This seems like it's got a lot more, it seems like an inkier consistency than that. Uh, that gives me a much smoother, much shinier finish. And with the glue, when the glue hardens, it gives you a nice sort of, um, I wouldn't say clear coat, but it's, it's a different finish and paint altogether. It's, it seems a lot harder. I've done this one as well. Um, you can't see much because it's washed out, but like it, I don't know, people freak out. They go, man, what is it? That's not paint. It's not, it's a mixture of paint and glue. Um, so I'm gonna spray this down now. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna do this in you know, about four or eight times speed. It takes a while. Once I spray it, I give it about 20 minutes to dry. Spray it again, another 20 minutes, spray it again, another 20 minutes. Uh, today is a pretty windy day. It's not very hot, so it may take, well, oh, sorry, on a good summer's day, it'll take about you know, 10 minutes between coats. This will take about 20. So um, just bear with this. All right, I have to close the door so the wind doesn't blow dust in. So I've got our paint in our little uh, spray thingy. I'm gonna just put a dust coat on there. Just put on lightly, don't go too heavy because it'll start to drip and then some nightmare taking that shit off. Um, so I'm gonna set the camera. Yeah. This will happen. You gotta unclog this shit. I haven't cleaned it in a while, that's, that's my fault. Um, let me just find my... I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take... This is not the right tool for it, but... It works most of the time. There we go. This will come off. If you're lucky, it's not stuck on the paint. When you put the glue in the paint, sometimes it turns really gluggy. Like really fucking gluggy. It's like some sort of chemical reaction that happens in there. So you've got to mix the shit out of it. Fill it down with a bit of water. There you go. Not in here, it must be the down in there. I'll just cut. Alright, so I bought a new fucking gun. The other one just packed up. Every time I make a video, one of my tools breaks. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what the deal is. I do abuse my tools, but I think it's just like it's probably, I don't know, they just fucking hate me. It's probably karma. You know, I don't know this, but I've got a new guts, exactly the same one as the last one, it's just brand new, so it looks cleaner and you can see the, you know, logo and shit, but, um, let's start. Okay. Good work. Work in the work.
Okay. All right. People ask me, they go, Abs, why do you charge an extra 100 bucks or so more for LED buttons when these are pretty much the same price? Um, I'll show you why. Well, firstly, we're going to have to unwire all this shit. We'll leave the joysticks on. So, take these clips out. The reason I'm unwiring this is because, as I mentioned earlier, the bloke um, who ordered it decided he wanted LED buttons instead of colour buttons last second. So um, I don't mind, look, you know, it's just, it's a bit of a uh, fuckery, you know, like, ah, uh, damn it, alright, you'll see how these are all just daisy chained on. This isn't anywhere near the neatest way to do it, but I just want to get rid of these for now and I'll recycle them next time. Let's get off. We'll get to the LED fiasco in a second. At least they're coming off today. Usually they don't usually come off very easily. If it looks like a tangled mess, it's because it is. This, this is not controlled chaos, man. This is this is just. I'm dreading going through these and. Ah, oh, damn it. The reason why I keep saying damn it is because when you pull these out, you manage to scrape your knuckles against these sharp bits and it, it hurts. The thing is, you're probably saying you're, you're a bitch, man. It's just a scratch. It is just a scratch. But what happens is, um. After a couple of hours, you go to wash your hands or whatnot, try to eat or, or, or whatever. It starts to sting, and every time you bend your finger, it stings and it, it sucks. Right, I've left these on because the joysticks are staying on. These are part of the trackball, so they don't come off. All right, I'm happy everyone can see this. Standard button goes on like this. Let me see that. This is all you need to do. There's a hole in here. Button goes this way. Light goes on top. Switch. Plug in positive, plug in negative. Have a nice day. He's gone. We'll get him later. LED buttons. Oh, what a prick. Alright, I'll show you I'll show you one for now. I'm gonna have to do the whole lot, but I'm gonna speed the video up for that. These are my LEDs. They come individually packed for your fucking amusement. You gotta take them out, undo the lug, chuck the spacer out, we don't need it. Put it in, put the lug in. It's not hard, it's just there's a lot more to it than the other one, all right? Grab a little ensemble that goes inside it, put the switch on. All right. Now these are the good LED buttons, they're not the shitty ones where these tend to fall out of the back of the buttons. Find your LED, this one's going to be white. Find the positive leg is that one. Then you've got to stick it in there. But this only goes sort of one way, so you've got to tighten it. Then you've got to. No, see, it's coming out, so you've got to tighten it a bit more. Then you've got to snap it in place. Now it's in. Now you've got two sets of wiring. Sorry, it's double the wiring. You've got positive, you've got negative. Then you've got positive and negative for the LED as well. So all that I could have probably wired one side um, for the time it took me to do that. 
So it takes an extra hour or so worth of fucking around. Um, so yeah, obviously I'll, I'll charge accordingly. Unless it's really, really quiet and there's no work, but that, that's very rare. There's always work. But uh, this isn't my full-time thing. This is just a paid hobby. I'm lucky in that sense. Um, my daytime work is not this. So, all right. We're going to fast forward. I'm going to take all these out. Actually, no, I'll stop the video and I'll take them out first. Otherwise, people might get confused if they haven't... If they've sped through this talking part, they won't know what I'm doing. They'll probably think, what the fuck's he taking buttons out and putting buttons back in again? So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to cut. I'm going to come back. All right, in this case, my supplier put non-light-up player buttons instead of light up, but the customer's fine with that, he doesn't really care. As long as the rest light up, he's happy. So, let's let's start, let the fun begin, shall we?
So they cut my purse specs way too fucking short. Jesus. I told them 950 mil. They cut it at 920. I just realized that when I tried to mount it. It was way, way too small. Now, I'll put these little, um, can't see it really too well, can you? These foamy things, they just stop dust from getting in. Uh, the top is protected by this aluminium bracket, the bottom is protected by bracket, but sometimes dust tends to get in there, so I'll block that. And that also allows for, if it's a couple of millimetres off, it's blocked anyway, but they've just gone way too short. And it's Sunday, and, um, I'm fucking pissed because this guy wants to pick it up on Monday and I won't have time to go to the freaking shop, get it cut and come back or have to work something out. But um, also, generally I, I get the white opalescent stuff, which is the, the stuff that the sign riders use uh, for light boxes, but they cut it clear for me and because it's wrapped in that white tape, you can see there you can't tell if it's white or clear. So when I unwrapped it, I was a bit shocked that they've given me clear perspex instead of fucking white. Now, excuse me, <clears throat> frog in my throat. Um, now, <clears throat> fuck, it's dusty in here, jeez. Either I have to go with clear perspex, but that looked like shit. It means you have to get white backed. Um, if you're gonna put a decal on there or something, it's gonna be printed on something white. Um, but generally people want the light box, the white stuff. So I spray painted that white, um, but I don't think it's going to let a, enough light through. I don't know. So um, the rest of this vid will be doing it without the um, Perspex on the screen because guess what? They cut that 30 millimeters too short as well. They cut it at 920. I can't do shit with it. Um, it's, it's way too short. So um, I have to go back and give them hell on Monday. We'll finish doing the rest of it. We'll do the uh, the pinball. I've put the buttons in and the plunger there. Uh, we'll put the door lock in. We'll config the system. There's a lot of config to do. I, I put a hard drive in, like an SSD, and just dump everything on there. But um, I still go manually and reconfig, check the config anyway on a lot of things. Map buttons. Um, sometimes they're there. They don't come. Even though the ini file or the config file on the system has them mapped, sometimes they're just unmapped for whatever reason it is so i just like to double check that so uh, let's continue
<laughs> Alright, I'm probably going to be in the way. But. Uh, let's test out pinball first. Some of these don't work on first start. You get a factor set as restore. That's normal. You have to get out, start it again. It only happens once and once only. It's looking for a config file that's not there. The only time it writes the config file is when you start it. So when you first start it, there's no file. It's got to write it. So once it's written that file, it does its checks and everything. Um, everything's fine. You get out. And now every time you start it, it should be fine. Testing revision and something or other. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. soundtrack of any pinball machine ever. If it works. Uh, I hope it works. I haven't tested all these yet, but I will soon. desktop so people know where they are so if you want to install a front end like hyperspin or whatnot you just point everything to what's on desktop um, like I said in my previous videos I, I shit on hyperspin a lot it's a beautiful system it's it's great I love it you know but the thing is it's too glitchy for my liking and when I sell a machine to a customer I don't want any glitches at all zero nothing right but I do put hyperspin on there on request, if people want me to put on there, I'll put on there. But I'll give them a disclaimer that, hey, you know, it's going to freeze sometimes, shit's not going to work, something's going to run slower than it should because it's over bloated. But um, I know you can get it working perfectly, so I just, I just don't bother with it. So enthusiasts, people who, who, who want an arcade machine but don't have the skills or the tools or whatnot to, all the time to build one, I'm happy to build a machine, put everything on there, and all you've got to do is download Hyperspin, it's going to ask you where the executable is. You say it's on the desktop and you know, Game Boy Banks. It's going to ask you where the ROM folder is, you point the ROM folder. It's going to ask you where the snapshots and GitHub files is, you, it's all in there. Likewise with Nintendo and Sega Master System, Mega Drive, etc. Um, but this way, I'll leave it unlocked. It's not because I'm too lazy, you know, to, I'll leave it this way so people can access the actual system 
and do whatever the hell they want because I don't own this. This isn't mine. These emulators aren't mine. I don't sell them. You're not allowed to sell them, you know? So I've got all the readme files, all the links to, you know, the devs pages with main so you can get in there and play with it and do what you want, do whatever you like. But with some of these, a lot of these hyperspin systems people sell, they're locked out. You can't get in there. You can't get into this back end or, you know, or desktop anyway and start manipulating and, you know, adding stuff and doing it. Do whatever you want, you know, but they won't let you. You, you, you gotta, I mean, most of the machines I've seen that have come here for me to repair. Um, to get out of hyperspin, you've got to press two or three keys at the same time. They don't tell you which keys they are, so you've got to sort of force yourself in there. And, um, and man, they're not configured correctly. Jesus, it's, it's the amount of machines I see that just someone's bought a hyperspin setup from eBay or something, they've chucked it in there. Half the shit doesn't work right, man. It pisses me off, you know. People sell these for good money too. So I'll get in there and I configure for them and I give it back to them with their hyperspin. Then they can play in that some games don't run as fast as mine do. It's because hyperspin just slows them down way too much. You need a higher end system with a you know, massive hard drive to, to run all that shit. This is just an entry level. I'm only using a, a very well optimized dual core and it's overpowered for all this stuff. Um, but anyway, it's um, continue setting this shit up. Uh, pinball, turbo graphics, we've got no. Show you something here. It's going to be fucked up. Yeah, that's what happens when you start making for the first time. Can't do this, you know, so you gotta get rid of this. Uh, area. Shut it down. Open it again. Areas back in, make it bigger, uh, file, exit, let it save, open it up again, and uh, I've got to go to my filters, advanced, effects, I've got my own proprietary effect here somewhere. Give it a test, shall we? Now watch this. This is a vertical game, right? It's usually this big. And every other machine out there that has a wide screen, they'll enforce it back into here so you lose all the edges. But look how good this looks. Stretched. No pixelation, no artifacting. I maybe broke this temporarily so I can get to the screen. Um, most other machines you'll see out there will have it like this. Now it looks better. Right? Like you've lost the rest of the screen. I mean, it still looks right on the screen right now. Um, but there's hardly any difference between that original screen format and the filters I've put in place. Look at that. There's hardly a difference. There's a bit of stretch, but there's no pixelation. Personally, I like it, but there's that option where you can default it back to screen size. But I'll show you, um, like the tip and tag. I like it on 9. I've done it on the previous video, but still got to test the buttons. All of them. We'll run a full play again. Good morning. Hello. Let's play around. Come on. No frame skipping, no lag, no nothing. Because it's done right. And I'll show you a secret, like fucking this is what pisses me off, right? When you download, most of the time you download main and you know, you, or the ROM sets with them, 
you get a properties. All right. This one's a CXD, 100 megahertz chip. That's what it ran at originally, right? Um, so it runs a full frame rate. Most of the time, these games when you get the ROM set, they default to this, this H8, you know, 16.9 megahertz. I mean, that's freaking six times slower than what that is. So people will play Tekken, for example, and it runs really, really slow because it's running off that old processor there. And they think, hey, it must be the computer that's slow. I'll just go buy a high-end i7 or something and spend an extra five, six hundred bucks and it, it fixes it slightly. Um, look, I mean, you can pay 600 bucks and get Tekken working, or you can just go online, find the chip it needs, you know, and install it. It's, it's, it's easy. There's a folder in MAME where all the config CPUs, etc., et are kept. They're in there, config. You put them in there, you go into MAME UI. There's other ways of doing it. This way I'll do it. Uh, wait, no, hang on. There's a, you go to open read, notepad. Set your values, they're in there, pointed to that particular processor. And that's it, it'll work perfectly. You know? So what we've done is we've just written a little script where we've queried every game against its known CPUs, what they're supposed to use, right? And um, and it'll spit out, okay, for example, Tekken Tag had the old HX, whatever it was, processor in there. Um, Street Fighter EX as well. So what it does, it's given us a whole bunch of games that don't have the correct processor as per the ones that should have it. We've gone in there, spent hours finding those, downloading them, installing them, you know, configuring them. That's why everything works properly. It's not the computer, guys. It's, I mean, you can get a higher end computer to work better, of course, but emulators don't look at your graphics card. They don't give a shit if you've got a GTX 1080 Ti or something. They don't give a shit. You can have an onboard, you know, just piece of shit graphics card. It'll work just fine. It's all in the config. That's all it is. Um, Street Fighter EX, where is it? I just had it. EX2. I'll show this in the last video because people don't believe I've got it working properly on a dual core, but if you go to properties, the default processor is going to run out when you download it most of the time is the old Z80 chip, the Zylon 8 megahertz. 8 megahertz, fuck. It wants a CXD chip, it's 100 megahertz, all right? That Zylon 80, the Z80 chip there, it's, it's 12 times slower than the one that it wants. A lot of the times, out of the box, you go like this, it doesn't have that. You've got to go in there and find it. Now, for home use, it doesn't matter. You probably wouldn't care, but if you're selling a machine, you don't want people to come back to you and fucking and complain that games are running slow. There's a dickhead. He knows who he is because he watches my videos. He's directly competing with me. He's the one that cleaned my machines. He's up in Queensland, all right? He just tells people, oh, that's just how it is. The game doesn't work properly. You can't do anything about it. Bullshit. He doesn't know fucking jack wall, all right? This is what you're supposed to do. Now, a lot of times you can download the ROM set. You might be lucky, you might have all this done already, you know, or, or some of them or most of them, but um, that's the difference between how I do things and how other people do things. I've got a lot of love for this shit. I mean, it is about the money, obviously, you know, but I don't make a lot out of it, you know. But the thing is, like, I enjoy doing it, you know, and I want to keep the dream alive. But I, I don't like people calling me back and saying, hey, man, this doesn't work. So I've made sure fucking everything works. Now, there's purists out there that, I'm not purists, but people, oh, yeah, you can... Run everything under hyperspeed and I run flawlessly or under Maximus, etc. I'm about to have Maximus now, actually, but I need to go get my um, keyboards. Bit on this. Maximus as a front end for all my emulators here. Uh, Maximus isn't without his glitches as well. But um, I paid for the license about six times and it keeps running out and I have to email them and say, hey man, can I have my license back because you know, it's run out. Um, it hasn't run out, but you know, it's not working anymore on the system. And I'll say, no, no, you've got to pay for it again and that pisses me off. So, key gen it is. When people cheat you, you've got to cheat them back. I mean, yeah, you should turn down the cheat, I guess, but not much. All right. Uh, check out. All right. Uh, Max, let's just put that here. Take it, let's just put it there. Um, all right, so. Paste. Thank 
Because even with all the filters set in place, filters that I mean are supposed to not show games that don't work, etc., doesn't work perfectly. So I'm. Um, oh shit! Oh, I forgot this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I forgot this all. Sorry. Yeah, Maximus will show you games that don't work as working and games that work as not working. So that's sort of pissing me off a little bit. I mean, can't get around it. Oh shit, I'm gonna hit this as well. Exit. I'm missing a tire. What a tire. Safari somehow. I thought maybe I must have actually dragged into a corner. Oh, no, I haven't. No. No. Oh, This pair of phone. Cool. All right. Lucky I keep back ups. So this is actually good because if you want to add an emulator, for example, you can just go to preferences, go to config, go to display, go to Atari, add, close, oh no, don't close, have to config it, alright, config, find Atari, So it says use a desktop Atari, yep, a desktop Atari ROMs, yep, done. Now let's try it out.
Here's that there is. Let the light up to the so. Alright. I'll take care of this in fairness. Get rid of the 1080p. And then we'll go to the controller. So to exit. Und there you go. Und there you go. Oh, that's a bad German accent. Oh. Full screen. Look how fast it runs, man. Beautiful. Oh, so we'll get out. Let's press this to go. Alright, Pimble works. Main works. Got a test full player. Find the um, XDM, I think. Or oh, something. If they had a full player. Let's just test it on that all the time. Next one is record. I know what you X Men, Children of the Atom. What was it? Four player, there we go. <laughs> go for the screen test. Send me the green ones for some reason. All the time, mate. Hardly any other colour blows on me, but the green ones. That must have given me a bad batch. I can try enough. I mean, you can't send back one of these, you know, so you have to write it off. Alright, so these are okay. Let's try X Men Street Fighter for the six buttons. I'll use this because it's fast and if this works then you know everything else is going to work. I'll show you something. Yeah. 
It all works, right? But what happens is people haven't played these in a long time. They'll go home, they'll fire it up, and they can't get the Hadouken out or something, or the spin kick or, or whatnot, and I get a phone call, man, it's not working. It is working. You just, sorry, you're just rusty. I play these every day so I can get the moves out. So I'll show them, I'll show everyone the same thing. Look, I'll do it 10 times in a row, it works fine. Um, so I've got the six buttons working there. So the four player works there. What else? Um, you know what I got working the other day is G Darius. G Darius, this was on the PlayStation 1. This shouldn't work on this. The system is a bit slightly underpowered for you, but also um, the conversion is pretty shitty. Not conversion, but the, 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 the dump, the wrong dump they did. But, um, this is probably one of the best shooters I've ever played. We don't care. We don't care about your shitty. Now I'm a Dragon Ball Z fan, I'm a fan of the boom fights, right? And with this game, you can capture. Oh my god, you can capture them. You can capture actually any any fighters except the end of level guardian, so I'll capture this one, right? Now you've got two options when you have them. They'll stay with you till you die. Or till you blow them up. You can blow them up by just going bang and you get a nice little explosion. Or the really fun part is every end of level guardian will shoot a massive beam out of you and you can have a beam from you. Like in Dragon Ball Z when they do the Kami Hami Ha and they sort of um, sit there and go Rawr! And I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch this fish, right? Now if you hold the button, you, oh, you don't die, you don't have fucking I'll catch the other one. Right. Hold the button. Check this out. Big ass fucking beam. And it'll last for ages. So if the end of level guardian shoots a beam out like that at you, which they always do, and your beams flash, it becomes a battle of the will, so to speak. I'll put it together, I'll fuck it up. And you sit there and you've got a massive button and your beams get bigger until one of you loses. It's really bad. But well, look how fast this runs, man. This is G Darius. It's unbelievable. Right, done. Uh, now we've got for a long time this game never used to work on any man, but it works on this one and I'm really happy. Because the soundtrack, I think on Raven Part 2 is one of the best soundtracks of any games ever. Uh, Raven, Raven, Raven DX, Raven Fighter, Raven Jet, Raven 2. Look, no stretch man. Oh, very hardly any stretch. Face laser because when you hit press it, it locks on like a stream of toothpaste. This is this is the weakest weapon, but it locks on to the target, so you can be on one side of the screen, you know, dodging, so it'll just lock on your skin human and dodge the bullets. See that? That's a user practice right there. So everything works. That's great. We're going to put the um, perspex on. We're going to put the glass on here. The perspex. I'm using um, not actual perspex. Well, it's perspex, but it's uh, plexiglass. It's the expensive side of perspex. It doesn't scratch as easily. It's crystal clear. It's clearer than glass, and um, it's, it's very sort of um, hard wearing. And uh, we've got to put a couple of brackets here to hold this down, so it doesn't keep doing that. But this will allow you to, we've got to screw this down as well, that's all. But this will allow you to access the screen, you can you know, do whatever you need, put the boat back of the joysticks. So we're done, I'll um, come back when everything's finished, I guess. I'm going to put the lock on the door as well, so. 
so here it is full player still got to put the the um light box it's got opalescent white perspex on the top there to diffuse the, the light obviously and we've got to put the glass on i have to wait till tomorrow to get those but i'll give you a quick run around so this took about i, I put brackets underneath to hold it took about nine hours to build i've got to cut that bit there too nine hours i think more or less i started just after about six hours and i was at it for about three hours today but um there you go there's the inside there's the back you see the paint came out pretty much consistent it's still the lighting the way it hits it is sort of weird but the, it's it actually looks quite good there you go so full play machine cost i won't go through cost just yet <laughs> It doesn't look the way the way it is there. Uh, from what you see, big ass screen, you know, four players, top notch, you know, top of the line LEDs and the buttons and, the, and all that. Um, I think it costs you about nine hundred and twenty to build. That's including the wood. That that's everything, all inclusive, everything, computer, sound system, the whole lot. Uh, but I get everything wholesale as well. Um, so I've got a commercial contract with good guys, a local, you know, electrical wholesaler here. Um, for the screens, I've got a, uh, a commercial contract for the PCs that I get and sound systems, etc. So and the joysticks as well. So I get everything qu quite cheap. Um, but 920s, that's including fucking just all the little sundries and bits and pieces and shit like that. But you can build on for much, much less. If I went through normal buttons, smaller screen, if I use a 24-inch screen over there, uh, which I think I'll build one one day, I'll do a toot on there. That costs a lot less, that costs about half that. Actually, not, I wouldn't say half, almost, about 500-ish, you know. But there's nine hours worth of labour that you've got to charge for, you know, or that I've got to charge for. So, um, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, do it for a couple hundred bucks on top of, what well, you know, the time it took me. So, um, that's it. I, I think it looks quite nice. A lot of my customers love them. Uh, now, obviously, there's a lot of things you can do differently. You know, um, you can... Uh, I mean, I've over-engineered these for shops and that. Uh, I've locked the whole system out so you can't tamper. There's no trackball. I've made everything fortified so you can't get in. But for home use, you want to, you want people to get into your systems. For maintenance, I don't want service calls. I don't want people in Melbourne, you know, in another state calling me up saying, hey, button stuck, what do I do? I, I feel helpless. You can change everything with a screwdriver and two minutes and, and no experience necessary with these. So um, they're sort of under-engineered for home use over-engineered for commercial use you don't want little smart ass kids breaking in and trying to hack the system so um i'll give you one more little once around and that's it so i'll take a photo or whatnot or once i put the um glass and the stuff and cleaned it all up and everything got to mount that little sound pod over there as well but uh here we are